Is it biblical for a Christian to meditate? Short answer, yes it is. But there's a right way, the biblical way, and a wrong way to do it. In this video, we're gonna walk through what biblical meditation is, the right and wrong way to go about it, as well as some tips to help you make the most out of it. Let's go. What's up friends, Jeremiah here. Now before we discuss what biblical meditation is, it's important to know what not to do. There are so many practices today that are masquerading as Christian when they're really not. And when it comes to this topic of meditation, it's even more evident if you know what to look out for. There's a form of Christian meditation that has been adapted from New Age or Eastern religions where the goal is to empty your mind or reach enlightenment or cleanse your chakras or something like that. In those forms of meditation, you're supposed to stay still, usually in a very specific sit-in position, and repeat some words or phrases that they call mantras and all of this is in an effort to slow down your breathing so that you can empty your mind and could lead to you having some spiritual experiences this is not biblical meditation just because you steal a practice from a religion and stitch christian in front of it doesn't make it christian or biblical and it's dangerous for christians to engage in such activities because it diverts you from the gospel it puts the focus on you instead of god and you can actually open your mind up to demonic influences now of course as a believer you cannot be possessed but it's best to stay away from things that just allow the enemy to put certain thoughts in your mind and as the goal of these forms of meditation is to reach a spiritual experience you don't know if what you're experiencing is truly god or the enemy now with that said let's talk about the true biblical meditation for christians now there's no clear-cut definition for meditation in the bible but we can look at the hebrew and greek words that are used to describe this practice and deduce what it means for example in the old testament the hebrew words that are translated as meditation in english are shuach and siach these words mean to put forth or consider or ponder. That phrase put forth gives the image of a plant sprouting. A seed puts forth its shoots and germinates out of the ground. So that's the kind of picture we need to have when we're thinking about meditation in the biblical sense. And we'll talk about this more in just a second. The more common Hebrew word used for meditation is haga, which means to murmur, to mutter, or to growl under your breath. And the image associated with this word is that of an animal that has four chambers in their stomachs, which are called ruminants, right? They eat their food, but they don't digest it all the way through the first time. The food goes into one chamber in their stomach, and then when they go relax or they're sitting under some shade, they bring that food back up and keep chewing it because they need to break it down more and get the right nutrients out of it. In a minute, we'll see how this can be practically applied to meditation, but you can see a common thread through these definitions. None of these definitions allude to an empty mind. You are pondering something or considering something or you're muttering or murmuring something under your breath. This is why when the Bible instructs us to meditate, it doesn't just leave things up in the air, like just go and meditate. It tells us exactly how to meditate. For example, in Joshua 1 verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Psalm 1 verse 1 to 2 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Finally, Psalm 77 verse 12 says, I will also meditate on all your work, and talk of all your deeds. It is not biblical meditation if the goal is not to ponder on the word of God. Of course, in the Old Testament, it was the law. That's what Joshua had and that's what David had. But in our day, we ponder on the gospel and on the teachings of the apostles. We meditate on these. We don't just leave our minds blank. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, Paul tells Timothy, meditate on these things. In other words, everything that he had written about in this letter, meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. And the Greek word used for this word meditate upon is the word melatao, 
which means to revolve in the mind. So again, meditation is about pondering or considering the word of God in your mind or even under your breath by muttering it and speaking it. So now that you know what biblical meditation is and that the goal is to focus on God and his word, what are some helpful tips for effective biblical meditation? Number one, you cannot meditate on what you haven't read or heard. Remember the ruminants we talked about? They eat first, they have a whole meal, and then when they're relaxing, they bring up that food once again so that they can chew upon it and get the nutrients out of it. So how do we practically apply this? Well, you can have the Bible in front of you 24 seven, but you can read it and store it in your mind, you know, call it your first stomach, so that when you're relaxing or when you have a spare moment, you can bring these verses back up and ponder on them. For example, I find that when I'm driving or standing in line or taking a walk, the verses that I have stored up in my mind can come up and I can ponder on them. And the beautiful thing about scripture is because everything is tied together, when you ponder on one verse, it will lead you to another and another and you're getting so much meat or so much nutrition from this word because you've spent the time storing up in your mind. Now, I don't think I made this clear earlier on, but you don't need a specific sit-in position to meditate biblically. You're not trying to align your chakras or whatever. You are just pondering on the word of God and that can happen at anywhere at any time. My second tip is that it's helpful to have a specific place and time to meditate on the word of God, especially when you're just now getting started or you're trying to get into the habit or trying to get more consistent at it, it's just good to get into the practice of having a specific time of the day, preferably a time where there are no distractions like early in the morning and a place that you can calmly, comfortably meditate on the word of God. Another benefit of having this specific time and place is unlike when you're driving or taking a walk where you can't really write stuff down, you can take a pen and a paper or on your phone or something that's not going to distract you, of course, to write down whatever comes to mind as you're meditating on the word of God. Remember that godly biblical meditation is not passive. You're not just sitting there and letting your thoughts go away. You are receiving from the word of God. So whenever you have the chance to actually sit down and meditate, make sure that you are prepared to write something down. My third and final tip is to remember the goal of meditation. It's not to have some spiritual experience. It's to know God and his word more, to understand the gospel more. So don't go into it thinking you're about to have these spiritual supernatural experiences like the new age or the Eastern religions do it, but go into it knowing that you're going to receive from the word of God and just be prepared for that. If you apply these tips, I'm sure you'll make the most out of your meditation time. If this video blessed you, kindly bless the like button for the YouTube algorithm and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Check out this video on how to read the Bible so you can store up more of the word to chew on later. Until next time, take care and God bless you.